years ago. And that did us pretty well, especially in developed countries. But but now it's clear that as we're in what's, what some people are calling the great pause, so after the great acceleration, that there's a lot of work to be done to build more resilient systems, more inclusive systems, so that everyone has a way to get through events like this, which will always be in the mix. This is something that you know, humanity on a finite planet is figuring out how things work. And it's a process that is always going to be kind of herky jerky. But on Sundays, we do this, I call it unbroken circle. And we do a session that's more quiet, more reflective, more about um, the, the inner resilience that's needed to get through these moments. And it's about the arts very much so. So today you're going to hear from a, a collection of songwriters and, uh, and thinkers and doers, um, starting right now with a uh, my two first guests to pop into the studio, Tony Furtado, who's way out in Oregon. Are you in Portland, Tony? I am in Portland, yes. Portland, Oregon, which faces yeah. a big hard knock someday, the Cascadia oh, yeah. fault that I've written. Thank you. I've written, <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to bum you out, but I've written so much about that and about Oregon, Oregonians working you know, hard to try to make sure schools will not fall down and all that stuff. So this is a, this is a good little test right here. <laughs> yeah, and here we have this this uh, biological uh, earthquake, and and John Hall, who's uh, fixing something, but will be back at his desk in a second. John is a uh, uh, best known as a member of Orleans, the band uh, that had some great hits over the decades, and is still on the road when they can be on the road, which is not right now. John is a, a Hudson Valley resident like me. He lives up in Dutchess County, and he uh, is also a former congressman. So he is. Probably going to weigh in a little bit here on, you know, how Congress might work again someday. <laughs> I don't know, John. It has worked it off has and worked. on. It can and work. I, I think it could again, and hopefully will. Yeah, we'll 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 we'll, we'll explore that a little bit too. Tia Nelson, who is uh, a uh, one of the forces behind the Earth Day the celebration we've just had, the 50th Earth Day, she'll be joining us in a little bit, and and onward. But first, let's just get a little more familiar with Tony and John. So Tony, you woke up early. You get first dibs. <laughs> <laughs> what, how, how, have you been a musician since you basically came out of the womb and were a toddler? No. When did you? When did the start? And, and what's what's your background? For me, uh, I um, I grew up in California in Pleasanton, California, and uh, my early childhood was the early seventies. Um, and hearing you know FM radio when it wasn't really formatted, um, riding along in my mom's old Mustang. Um, and I remember that uh, when it came time to uh, possibly play an instrument, my mom would ask me, you know, hey, do you want to take guitar lessons or piano lessons? And I'd, I'd always say no, because everyone else was doing that. And then when, when I was in sixth grade, we had to do a report on a musical instrument and uh, make that instrument out of household items. And I made a little banjo out of a pie tin and stretched paper over it and a stick and rubber bands and found out the Af it came from Africa and had this really rich history. And so I begged and begged and got an actual banjo for my 12th birthday and dug right in. Um, the funny thing is there was no music in my family other than me wanting to play. And uh, <clears throat> the cool thing about the Bay Area was it had a little kind of uh, just building bluegrass scene going on at the time. I didn't know what bluegrass music was either. So, mm. But that was what I dove in on uh, was the banjo first, eventually uh, – I took classical guitar lessons and, and got into uh, being a freelance sideman for a while. Um, uh, would practice, you know, six to eight hours a day until I went to, to college as an art major to become a sculptor and got plucked out early to tour with Laurie Lewis and Grant Street, a, good, oh, yeah. a really great folk singer from Berkeley, and uh, signed my own record deal with uh, Rounder Records to start off doing instrumental music and then gradually got got into being a singer songwriter and playing a lot of slide guitar and doing what i do now so that's the encapsulated history there <laughs> that's a pretty good history um, and uh you also now can you talk about some of the adjustments you've made to your how you how you relate with audiences in the last few oh, weeks yeah that's been that's been a tough one because uh you know over the past 30 some odd years i've just been um mainly making my living as a uh, as a touring and uh perform you know performing live you know and uh i do love recording but my my guts are on the stage mm -hmm. and um feeling the crowd, you know, feeling the audience uh, respond. 
So when it came time to basically kill about four or five tours that I had just set up, um, because I had been taking some time off the road to focus on recording new music and making new sculpture work, um, I, I, I knew that it had to happen. And so I made it happen right away. I was like, okay, I got to deal with the tech finally. Here we go. <laughs> and I, I learned a lot of the ins and outs. And once I started to get comfortable with the tech, also, my wife, uh, Stephanie Schneiderman, is a, a wonderful singer-songwriter here in Portland, and we decided to do um, do this together. Like, we do it every Thursday night. We do our stream, and then on Sundays, I do this. I do a little thing that's more focused on slide guitar and banjo. But the tricky thing is, you know, going in and knowing that people are there, you know, and, right. and trying, to, trying to act like you're on a stage. And it's taking a minute, but I'm, it, it's starting to feel it. Like we watch, we now decided to watch the chat room, you know, and that's the best way we can right. to feel the response. I, I swear, I think it would be a great app to add in or some kind of uh, adjustment with um, these, these streaming technologies to have some sort of applause sound that comes up. Yeah when people are applauding, you know, it could be more or less depending on how many people are in the room. I did notice that one of the evening uh, comedy hosts, um, and one of the first few sessions, it wasn't um, Colbert, but somebody had like a little boom box with, that was doing his own <laughs> laugh track, which is kind of funny. Uh, we are gonna get to some music in a second. Maybe, Tony, you wanna warm up with a little, I think just sure. a little diddle, a little something? Yeah, um, how about, uh, I got my guitar right here. I can play a little mellow slide thing. Not super mellow, but you know. I feel better already. <laughs> you know, th this, this, uh, I just tweeted, uh, you're playing live now and some soul, some soul healing slide. I, I started playing slide guitar. I, I was 17 when I started playing guitar, you know, we, you know, as a kid in Rhode Island and my brother, we borrowed my mom's guitar and I picked up slide almost immediately, partially because it's easy, it's easy, haha. -ha. Not yeah. easy to do it well, but but playing you an open one of these on your finger and play yeah. <laughs> open open tunings, you know, can simplify some things for a novice. I, yeah, I think totally. It's a good way to start. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have some more people to to introduce, and then John. But John, I wanted to kind of get into your story a little bit as well. Uh, thank you, Tony. That was again a great start mm -hmm. to Unbroken Circles this mm -hmm. morning. Thanks. We have we have Donna and Rick Nessler who are in the Catskills, good good musical friends from Clearwater circles. 
Clearwater, the Hudson River Sloop Clearwater organization is struggling terribly right now, like so many nonprofits. So I encourage people to Google for Clearwater Sloop and uh, think of uh, ways to help sustain that boat's power to educate people along the Hudson River and, and all around the world in environmental conservation. Joseph Pupe will be with us in a second. He's from Zambia, from Lusaka. Africa is uh, just getting its start and being part of the coronavirus pandemic. Sadly, if we think we have a lack of hospital capacity here, think about Nairobi, think about Lusaka, think about so many places in Africa in rural areas that have no capacity. And this virus is just getting there. Two weeks ago, the virus showed up and started killing Yanomami Indians in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. It started four months ago, somewhere in China, this little microbe crossed species and it's already affecting the entire planet. But again, today is about connectedness and t taking that that breath, literally taking a breath. And John Hall, you've for, for uh, several decades, you've been both a musician and uh, an environmental campaigner. You're best known for sure for your work in Orleans a band who had at least one song that was co-opted by many politicians. <laughs> You're still the one. <laughs> and and you then ended up in Congress for, uh, for you had an adventure in Washington. Um, Mr. Hall goes to Washington. So can you tell us a little bit about your, you know, just a snapshot of your background and, and then maybe you can sure. play a song. How, how uh, short can I make it? Uh, well, I started playing piano when I was four. I was, I, uh, four and a half, something like that. I started playing the Marines hymn with both hands and my parents sent me to get lessons. And, uh, it's the best thing they could have done for my musical understanding. Cause, uh, as I found out later when I was a school board president, the piano has, um, tri-sensory pathways to the brain. You can see, it, you can feel it and you can hear it. And, uh, it's, uh, it's a great way to learn not just music, but, but self-esteem and, uh, logic and mathematics, it's all, you know, um, I'm diverging here, but uh, okay. I like tangents. But, uh, you know, so I was supposed to be following my dad's footsteps into science or engineering. And instead I wound up uh, being the black sheep of the family. My mom wanted her three sons to be priests. My dad wanted them all to be scientists. So my younger brother became a priest. My older brother became a, uh, uh, actuary and my and i became a guy who plays guitar and writes songs some people think are too preachy and uh played in an assortment of bands from when i was in high school up through uh well through now <laughs> and uh um i was fortunate enough to uh long story but uh fortunate enough to they got connected with some people and write music to a Broadway show and an off-Broadway show and direct the music uh, to both in uh, 1969 when I was 20 years old. And um, and then... That's a heck of a time to have been 20 years old. I, I still feel like I was born just a few years late. Well, it's all, it comes and goes. And there's, you know, I mean, there are some very young writers and artists, singers, players today who were doing some great work and getting very well known very fast. I think it happens in different generations in different ways. And, uh, but anyway, Orleans started out in 1972. We're, uh, uh, we're still at it. We've made something like 18 albums, I think over that time and did have a couple of big hits. And my, uh, my first wife, Johanna and I, who wrote a lot of songs together, you know, were uh, able to write a song called Half Moon that Janis Joplin recorded. That was the first song we ever wrote that was cut right. by anybody famous and um and then we had a series of other recordings by other uh, singers and bands and uh and of course orleans that record stands with me and still the one and um and uh lots of others so uh so basically that's you know that's how i got here in short i i guess the detour into politics was uh when my own ox got gored uh and that's maybe another story but uh yeah we, we'll have time for that perhaps in this second half here if you can hang out uh sure so uh yeah you, you, we've been talking about music and maybe you can uh, offer up something i could certainly offer up something i will <laughs> offer up something um this thing is uh it's a song that uh that 
I wrote with uh, uh, with Johanna and Jonelle Mosser, a wonderful singer writer from Nashville, who we've written dozens of songs with. Um, and this this tune is called "One Tribe." <laughs> Neanderthal fighting, cro magnon be fighting back to protecting the tribe from someone who don't look cocky like do. Clubs turn to arrows, guns into missiles and planes. Sides are gone. Wait a million years. Start again. Bosnia won't be the last. And then, Oscar and England locked in the wars of the past. To kill, to see, just for the shape of the nose. to stand here for the God that they chose. and the blood's flashing out. Don't think like I do. Well, I'm not the words from your mouth. Media feeding it, bleeding it just for fun. Sorry, but you're out of love. Um, there was this point when Charles Darwin in 1872 in his less famous book, 
on human cultural evolution, he said, there's only an artificial barrier. Um, can there's only an artificial barrier preventing us from overcoming our tribal tendencies. And that was, and I keep thinking that the internet is sort of breaking that barrier in a way. Theoretically, we can all connect now in ways that were not possible. We can all, um, if we use this tool right, if we don't use it to divide and confuse and uh, aggravate and distract, we can actually have more of a sense of global identity, I think. Uh, it's still an untested idea, even though we've had the internet for 20, 25 years now. So uh, I want to introduce some more people here. Um, Tia Nelson will be on in a few minutes. She's just logged on from Wisconsin. Uh, oh, no, Washington, D.C., actually. She's taking care of her very elderly mom down in D.C. And Tia had this. Uh, um, well, I'll bring her in right now just to say hi. Hold on. Um, whoops. I just want to. Oh, there you are. Yeah, Tia, can you? Uh, you had a very long week. In, oh, in, in, boy. I sure did. I cross, crossed the finish line of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, uh, exhausted, but gratified that I'd done, done my duty anyway, both to uh, uh, to the past and the present, you know. And uh, your dad was Gaylord Nelson, a senator at a time when it seemed like bipartisan action in Congress was uh, almost like normal, at least there were always fights. That was Vietnam era, you know, 1969, yeah. 1970, but he was able to work with um, people across the aisle to get uh, the first Earth Day going, among other things. Yeah, you know, I just published an article, an interview with Pete McClowski, a, a Republican congressman from California who co-chaired the first, the steering committee for the first Earth Day with my dad. And uh, he's a great guy. And as I was talking with Adam Rome, the author of the book, The Genius of Earth Day, which is a fabulous, fabulous history of what you know, the first green generation and the environmental decade that followed the first Earth Day. Um, Adam likes to tell people, as do I, you know, it was the height of the Vietnam War. My father uh, voted against the appropriation for the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, one of th three members of the U.S. Senate who did so. And he, were, he was best friends with Melvin Laird, who was Secretary of Defense uh, for Richard Nixon at the height of the war. And they remained best friends until uh, they, uh, until my father passed and Mel uh, passed a, a little while afterwards. But I asked Mel how it was that he, two people of such different ideologies and politics, um, both honorable public servants in their own way, dedicated uh, uh, to um, making the world a better place as they saw it. How, how is it, Mel, that you and Papa stayed uh, friends all of those years? And it, his answer was quite simple. He said, we fought all day and we drank all night. <laughs> so drinking had a lot. Yeah, you know, I, I wrote about in the 90s for the New York Times, I wrote about the um, epic battle over the New York City water supply. The water supply of New York City mostly comes from the Catskills and further north than 19 reservoirs in a system system that spans 1200 square miles and it was fight after fight after fight and uh, it turned out that beer at um, a restaurant in kingston at one critical meeting having beer on the menu really did help uh lubricate things so maybe that that is uh it's certainly uh if the liquor stores were closed right now i think there'd be a lot more <laughs> problems that we'd see john could you comment briefly in, in your context as a former congressman of whether you think, you know, what do you think about the nation right now? Oh, you're, you're muted. John, you, John, you're muted. What do I think about the nation? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, can we get out of this mess without past, past the, the divides that seem to be so paralytic? Well, there've always been differences of opinion. I think it's, um, I think it's more pronounced today than maybe at any time since the Vietnam War, at least, in, you know, as I recall things. I think that there's a lot of goodwill on uh, on everybody's side. It's but there is uh, also the power of money. And uh, yeah. I was uh, in Congress um, when one of the more monumental things happened in terms of our democracy, which was the Supreme Court's Citizens United decision. And uh, 
which was in 2010. And I ran six times for office and that's the one I lost. Uh, it's not the reason necessarily that I lost. I mean, you know, yeah. it's not my seat. It's the people's in my district's seat in this area. And um, I was happy to serve two terms. And I also probably wouldn't be alive today, literally, if I had won and served another term for medical reasons that I won't go into. Yeah. But um, but uh, it would be nice if we could get, I think, if we could get some kind of um, campaign finance reform and, and not have the unlimited millions of dollars coming in to campaigns for any uh, congressional office or president or what have you from the super rich, from corporations, including foreign owned corporations, uh, which yeah. is what that decision allows. And it's turned our um, it's turned our elections into something that makes it almost impossible for the average per I mean, I was fortunate to have a musical career that allowed me to stop working long enough to run. You know, and uh, and then um, it was okay for two for two cycles in you know, congressional elections. I could raise enough money from some of it from my wonderful musician friends who donated their time and uh, and talents to to help raise money for me, and and from a lot of small donors and so on. But in 2010, all of a sudden there was five million bucks coming in, in the last two weeks from outside the district, outside the state, from yeah. super PACs that I won't bother mentioning now, but, uh, yeah. and they were just finding out what they could do, uh, after that decision. And it's gotten much worse since then. So right. that's the one thing I would say, but in order to, to go back to having a conversation that's not dominated by, by, um, slogans and, you know, short advertisements attacking somebody that or nicknames that people make up to put somebody down, uh, the best thing we could probably do would be to get that decision reversed. Yeah. So uh, I want to bring on here just to introduce them, uh, Donna and Rick Nessler, who are in the Catskills. And as I said earlier, are longtime friends from the circle of song around Pete Seeger and who um, were connected with the Clearwater, the Sloop Clearwater from the very early days around that same time, John, when you were describing when Orleans was formed. I think, Rick, you guys go back pretty much to the beginning, right? For the Clearwater? Um, well, I I got involved around uh, 76 or so, 77, yeah, okay. something like that. Right. Um, and, I actually and... played with John once. He probably doesn't remember. <laughs> um, we ended up playing a, a Baptist church in Nyack. And uh, Pete asked me to sing a song I'd written, and it was a simple three-chord wonder. And uh, I threw a break to John, and he did magnificently. <laughs> <laughs> what do you recall what the song was take me to the islands oh, oh wait, i love that song uh i don't know if you guys would be willing to play it right now and, and by the way i want to get to a circle back to tony because tony i think you have another session you have to do or a little later right so we'll um so that so anyway yeah donna and and rick nestler could you offer us a, a morning tune and John, you know, the, it is possible to play a lick in between verses. I found we found that on one of these shows recently <laughs> that doesn't like Key cause the internet to explode. Key of G. Key of G. All right. And David, uh, David Ross is here as well. I'll, I'll introduce him in a minute. Okay. okay. I'm ready. <laughs> Take me to the island. Where the trade winds blow, take me to the islands or where they got no ice or snow. Temperature is dropping, leaves fall from the tree. I should be down on some schooner, feeling that tropical breeze. So please just take me to the islands. Where the trade winds go, where they blow. Take me to the islands where they got no ice or snow. Now my hands, they are cold and my feet, they are froze. My teeth shatter in my head. I'm getting tired of sleeping the 16 blankets. 
lights on my bed to our electric to take me to the island where the trade winds blow where they blow take me to the island so where they have no ice or snow now it's hard to look distinguished with icicles on your chin I should be down on some sandy beach soaking up tonic engine. Please just take me to the island where the trade winds blow, where they blow. Take me to the island where they got no ice or snow. Now they pack at rats and they boat bumps. They all know where to go. Yes, it's down to the sunny islands are where those dogs all bound for you. So please don't take me to the island where the trade winds blow. Take me to the islands where they got no ice or snow. All from Utah, St. Thomas, all from Martinique. That's where I can practice my brand new winter sailing technique. Please just take me to the islands where the trade winds blow. with wind chill factors at 40 below. Please just take me to the island where the trade winds blow, where they blow. Take me to the island where they got no ice or snow. One last time, take me to the island where the trade winds blow, where they blow. Take me to the island <laughs> that was a perfect tonic again for where we are. I have uh, one yes, quick thing to do. Yes, it's Donna. It's your birthday, right? And in Clearwater tradition, we're going to sing a birthday song for you. All this right. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second verse. It's shorter than the... <laughs> Bravo, David. Can you, David? Are you muted? I think you're muted. Uh, I don't know. I, there you are. There you are. Good. Well, it's great to be here on another Sunday with you, Andy and John. It's great to see you. Uh, I miss you as our congressman, as do all of your former constituents. It was uh, actually I met you at a fundraiser that Jonathan Rose had for you. That was when I first played in public and uh, uh at, at, in any way and uh, so i always think of that warmly but but i don't think happily of the fact that you're not our congressman we really could use your voice now and, uh i'm as i was going to sing uh, well, david david actually uh, tony's got to do a song before oh, that's uh, great. He, I have yeah. to wait and listen to more of tony yeah, yeah. so tony uh from Portland, Oregon, Tony Furtado, <laughs> and uh, TonyFurtado.com. I'm going to make sure people sure. know. Could you also remind folks what days and evenings you have your... Yeah, yeah, session? sure. On on Thursday nights, my wife, uh, Stephanie Schneiderman, and I do a, a thing at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time that's streamed to all of our Facebooks and YouTubes. And, um, and then on Sundays, later on today, about 1 o'clock my time, I um I do a thing that's more focused on um in instrumental um well and vocal songs but based around you know banjos and slide guitars and stuff I've written and answering questions about that kind of thing. Great. So if you have one more tune in you for yeah, right sure. now, that would be awesome. And we sure. thank you. I thank you. You know, 
profoundly for being part of this little experiment. My my pleasure. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> my my pleasure to try to keep things going in the uh, <laughs> in my little corner of the music world. Yeah. I'll do a um, a song on this thing. It's a cello banjo. It's a big big Love banjo. It. And I usually uh, play songs that uh, if I want to sing a, a disgruntled song, but I want to play the banjo, I reach for this thing. I love that. So uh, anyway, this this song I wrote a few years back about um, going completely independent and starting my own label. I'm not dealing with some of the shadowy figures in the music business, but right now there's elements of this that I'm finding are coming true for the times. <laughs> it's called Broken Bell. Tolling laws crack my shell, don't waste your hammer on a broken bell. A broken bell, a broken bell, don't waste your hammer on a broken bell. Shadows rise when they hear the call, shine the light when you watch them fall. You watch them fall with the coming day, shine the light and they fade away. Well, I let you in, see inside. You will never change my mind. You will never change my mind. Cut your lies with a rusty tongue and you built your house with the DJ done. The DJ done got a ringing sound. DJ done gonna tear you down. Well, I let you in. See inside. You will never change my mind. You will never change my mind. Copper and tin, copper and tin for shiny skin. Shiny skin, shimmering new, copper and tin to ring it true. Tolling those crack my shell, don't waste your hammer on a broken bell. A broken bell, a broken bell, don't waste your hammer on a broken bell. Well, I let you in, the sea inside. You will never change my mind. You will never change my mind. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. Wow. Holy, holy. <laughs> Fill in the blank. <laughs> that was amazing. That's amazing. That was beautiful. <laughs> What's the name of that song if people want to search for it? That's called Broken Bell. Wow. Well, let's let's uh, fix the bell right now. Yes. <laughs> the uh, flatten the curve. 
fix the bell curve. Yes. <laughs> Tony, that was just spectacular. Um, I'll try to work hard to send people your way. I did support you on the, your PayPal link uh, I know, thank a you. week or so ago. And yeah. uh, folks should go to Tony Furt Tony Furtado.com and uh, stay tuned around this uh, ma masterful musician. So thank you for being part of our My pleasure. gathering. Yeah, and, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Ha happy to have you back sometime. Before yeah. you go, I want to introduce you to um, someone else who's just joined us. Uh, Joseph Poupe from Lusaka, Zambia, has been a guest hey. here since the beginning. Uh, Joseph, I think you could hear, uh, Tony, uh, what do you think of that instrument? Which originated in Africa, of course. The yep. banjo has its roots uh, thousands of years back. Wow, that was spectacular. That was really spectacular. I. I was trying to go through the chords or through the, 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 the song with my guitar, and I was like, wow, this is really beautiful. You know? Thank you. Yeah. That's Can't great. Yeah. So, Joseph, uh, uh, David Ross, who has celebrating his birthday today, is going to sing one in a minute, and we'll follow with you, and we'll keep talking and um, have some more tunes. And I th think maybe one Happy or two other people may David. join us. Happy birthday. You are the best. You are the best. Yeah. So, Tony, I'm going to say farewell and okay, uh, literally farewell. Me. Stay yes. safe. Yes. You too. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Take it easy. And uh, whoops. And John Hall is back with us too. John, uh, meet Joseph Pupe, who's a musician, songwriter from uh, Lusaka, Zambia. Hi, John Joseph. Hall. Joseph, John is a, was a founding Hi, member. Of the, I, band, I, of the band, of the band, Orleans. I, I heard you song. That was really beautiful. That was a wonderful piece. So, David, you said you have a tune uh, to to share with us on your birthday. You're in your seventies now, right? You, uh, we can't hear you. You're you're. Uh, oh, you're muted. Did I mute you? Oh, I muted you. Yeah, there I am. There we go. Uh, right. That was great. Tony's, that song by Tony was fantastic. You know, this this strange system you're using does weird things to instruments, but what it did to that that deep banjo was something super strange and really beautiful. Like uh, a flange, that flange effect almost. Yeah, I, I don't know quite what it was. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, yeah, this is my 71st birthday, and, um, and uh, so I'm happy to be alive, but I'm also extremely aware these days of the people who are dropping around us all over the world. And uh, so it's kind of hard to celebrate in a normal way uh, yeah. these days. I, I, it's not that I feel guilty about celebrating, but I think maybe being slightly mournful is a reasonable thing to be right now and to be mindful of those people who are, who are ill or are struggling to get back into health. And of course, the families and loved ones of all those people who are who are dying needlessly because of the stupidity of governments around the world, in particular our own stupid government, and the way they've mishandled this horrible situation, which would have been horrible anyway, but it would have been a lot less horrible if it was handled by somebody with even a, a, a half a brain. Anyhow, I, I'm going to sing a song I know you know uh, well, Andy, because it's by one of your favorite songwriters. It's by Bruce Coburn. Uh, it's called One Day I Walk. Oh, I have been a beggar and shall be one again. And few the ones with help to lend within the world of men. One day I walk in flowers, one day I walk on stones. Today I walk in hours, one day I shall be home. I've sat on the street corner and watched the boot hills shine and cried out glad and cried out sad 
with every boy's but mine. One day I walk in flowers. One day I walk on stone. Today I walk in hour. One day I shall be home. One day I walk in flower. One day I walk on stone. Today I walk in hour. One day I shall be home. One day I shall be home. Beautiful. Nicely done, David. Thank you, Andy. I'm, great. I'm glad you're doing this every week. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's sad not to be able to play music with your friends, but it's kind of uh, something that a lot of people are looking forward to is uh, hearing all these extraordinary musicians from around the world. Joseph, it's so great to have gotten to know you through this system. I can't wait to hear what you're going to sing for us this week. And Donna and Rick, I don't think I've seen you so much ever. It's just <laughs> tonic every week to hear you guys sing and play and to hear Donna play her, her harmonium or the, or the, or her uke. It's great. And, and, uh, and Claudia Gibson is coming ba back on oh, the from down in Texas. And what a treat to hear John Hall play again. Could never hear too much of that. So uh, let's see if we can hear a little bit from, uh, from Lusaka. Joseph, if you have a tune you can share, that'd be great. I know we've had some technical challenges sometimes, but if everyone mutes their, um, mutes their microphones, it might help. And uh, give us a, a song that's on your mind. Hey, David, thank you for the wonderful piece and thank you for the, for the kind remarks. Of course, I'm inspired by you and every great artist out there. Yeah, and um, this song that I'll share, I think Tony, Tony, that was a wonderful song, something to do with like We Are One Tribe. It reminds me of one of my pieces that I, I composed some time, two years ago. And maybe because uh, you, you played that and I, I could also share something in line with the lyrics. Uh, mine is called, um, let's celebrate who we are, you and me, our languages, our culture, and let's use that to you the bridge for for tomorrow's future so enjoy yeah. realities of change our thinking has changed our for us to take our place. Let's celebrate who we are, who we are. Beautiful future. It looks like Joseph's uh, feed froze. We've had this problem off and on, but the just even that first verse was astounding. Um, uh, Joseph, it, it's frozen. Oh, here we go. He's back. Let's celebrate who we are, you and me. Celebrate our languages, our 
Beautiful. We got the song. Uh, thank you very much, Joseph. Um, and how are Thanks. things in Lusaka right now? I, I've been keeping track through other contacts in Malawi and elsewhere who are very nervous about the situation, uh, both in rural areas and in cities in Africa. This is going. To, this is already becoming a, a big additional stress. And also on food. It's because people can't go out there, there's big worries about food supplies and hunger. Joseph, can you give a little clarity on you know what the situation is around you right now? I mean, obviously, it's it's pretty much the same with the rest of the world and uh, Africa. As we know, we haven't been spared. Zambia, in particular, in Lusaka, it's been the cases are now at eighty four, um, and we have had a couple of deaths and. We, as you know, we are, we are struggling with the equipment, the testing kits, and also the, some of the personal protective equipments for our doctors. And there's been a little bit of worry as in how that is going to be handled because we are lacking in capacity to, I mean, to tackle on that. And again, at the same time, when you talk about food, people have to decide between their health and also they are, I mean, putting food on the table. So you want to stay home or you want to go out there and look for food for your kids, you know? So there's, it, it, it's, it's really difficult to just even put measures both from the government and by the ordinary citizens. And we are hoping and praying that, I mean, with time or something gets to happen like a miracle, we can see this, I mean, past and get back to our normal lives. But at the moment, it's worrisome in all areas. Uh, I mean, in every way that you, you guys can describe it. Amazing. Well, I'd love to stay in touch with people there on and do a special separate webcast, not on a Sunday, one of our regular ones, uh, maybe live from Lusaka. We did one from Bhopal, India recently where a citizen group had uh, yeah. uh, formed to um, create a food network using WhatsApp so that uh, poor families, the poorest families and, uh, you know, informal settlements could uh, say, hey, we, we we're out of food. We need food um, even while they're in lockdown. So it's great what citizens can do from the bottom up to in some of these situations, even when governments fail, as uh, David noted, uh, which has unfortunately been uh, too common uh, Singapore, which was held out as a Singapore was held out early on in March as a superstar, and now it turns out that Singapore's uh, poor people, there are two hundred thousand workers in Singapore who are immigrants, who are now in the middle of an epidemic yeah. in their in their housing. So it's even in Singapore, which has such a high reputation, uh, this problem is there. Thanks for that that portrait. Um, yeah. I want to I want to bring on Tia bef before you go. I wanted to ask you to talk a little bit about the film that you helped work on. And I'm going to put up the uh, URL here so people can look to Outrider. And then I'm going to bring on Claudia Gibson to write, to sing another song in a few minutes. I can only fit six people in the screen yeah. at any one time. So Tia, could you just talk a little bit more about your yeah. situation? Yeah, yeah, I will. And thank you so much for having me. And then I'll, I'll hop off so and you can slot someone else in. I'm so grateful to be with all of you, this uh, community you've created uh, today and I'll I'll go uh, check on mom and make her breakfast. Um, <laughs> the uh, film uh, that we made uh, for the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, uh, for me there were a couple of important messages in it. One was to remind people that uh, a lot was accomplished through multi generational bipartisan um, uh, work. Uh, at a time of great uh, division in this country. It has happened before, it can and must happen again. But I really wanted people to hear my father's uh, call to action around the social justice piece, which I think the environmental community 
uh, has uh, embraced more recently. Uh, not enough, uh, but uh, but we're getting there. Uh, but his words uh, that ecology is a big science, not a narrow science. It's the worst environments in America and the inner cities and in Appalachia. The print version of that speech goes on to say the environment includes rats in the ghetto and public housing mm -hmm. unworthy of its name. Um, that, you know, those words were spoken by him 50 years ago on the eve of the first Earth Day. And his thinking of the environment and ecology at that time was in this broad and deep uh, uh, sense that's uh, so important today. And But I didn't want the film just to be a reflection on, you know, obviously I felt a sense of duty to tell my father's story. Um, but I also wanted the youth of today to know their, their power. I mean, they were really the juice behind the first Earth Day. Um, and I want people, if nothing else, to come away believing that individual action matters whether that's uh, voting or how we live our own values, individual action does matter. Unimaginable, uh, unimaginably beautiful things can happen. My father, it was, birthday was successful beyond my father's wildest dreams. He couldn't have known the outcome of this simple uh, call for an environmental teaching any more than uh, Rosa Parks could have known this simply saying no and refusing to move to the back of the bus during a time of segregation would change the trajectory of the civil rights movement or a more contemporary reference. Could, there's no way Greta Thunberg could have known that the simple act of protesting in front of the Swedish parliament would energize and mobilize a climate change youth movement. My point is uh, that each of us have uh, the power to make a difference. Sometimes unimaginable things happen. And so I wanted to honor the past, of course, but also the present and the future um, of the movement, which uh, and and think of ecology in this big, big, broad, deep, deep sense. And so I was super grateful to Varshini Prakash, the youth activist, co-founder of the Sunrise Movement, and Bob English, former uh, Republican congressman, an evangelical Christian, former climate skeptic, uh, for joining me in in telling this story. Um, I, you know, I've been at this a long time, Andy, and uh, I, I'm, if, if uh, environmentalists could get us across the finish line, we'd be there by now, right? So yeah. I'm trying to find new ways uh, to speak to people and bring in and amplify the voices um, uh, of others and, and, and help us see this as a, a collective challenge around which, united, we can address the greatest environmental challenge of our time, which is climate change. And so I, I hope it's a seven minute film and it, it, uh, it's, um, uh, I think, uh, uh, and hope that people find it uh, as powerful as uh, Varshini and Bob and I did to make it together. Uh, all of us representing different generations and political persuasions, but united, uh, united to address uh, the climate crisis. Well, it's great that you put in the energy and um... It's great that you know, one of the things we need right now more than anything in this century is what I call um, a mix of urgency and patience, which to me translates to sustained engagement. Yeah. So keep sustaining that engagement and yeah. we can all keep working going forward. I am grateful to all of you uh, for the music, for the wisdom, for the sharing, for the sense of community. Um, and I'm going to put myself on mute and keep watching you guys. You can take me off the screen and I'll go check on mom. Okay, and you can see I'm just introducing Claudia Gibson to the mix here who, from east of Austin, uh, west of Austin, Texas. Uh, so Claudia will be back. Uh, I mean, uh, Tia will be back. I'm going to minimize her in the screen. And Claudia, so you're, uh, I, I don't know if you ever intersected with John Hall, but let's see, everyone Hi. who's on screen right now is a Hudson Hi. Valley person. It's a thrill. It's, a thrill. it's an honor. Um, I listened to your music for a long time. I voted for you when I lived in New York, too. So. <laughs> There you go. That's awesome. Can you hear me okay? Because I cannot hear. Sounds really good to me. I hear you guys. I'm just not hearing me. So I don't know why. So Claudia, maybe you could introduce uh, introduce yourself with a song. We could talk a little bit. And, and then John Hall, if you have another tune, we'd love to hear from you again before uh, we move through the final hour here. Yeah. So, Cla Claudia, tell us how things are going in uh, Wimberley. Well, Wimberley is about, um, it's a little sort of rural Hill Country Town, about 45 minutes southwest Austin. 
And um, Texas is, you know, especially central Texas around Austin, it's such a different area. I mean, it's, you know, compared to the rest of Texas, we have such a wide divergence of opinions. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of people that are um, like me, you know, from maybe more um, liberal areas. There's the old timers, there's people who, you know, who commute in out of Austin. Uh, there's a lot of musicians and artists out here. Um, it's a beautiful place. It's kind of like Cold Spring where I lived in New York. You know, a lot of people will come up from the city. And, um, but, you know, out here you, <laughs> you run the gamut from um, the local grocery store, Chain HEB, which is wonderful about social distancing and doing everything they can and everyone's being pretty compliant. And then, you know, someone posted on Facebook the other day that they're going to have a you know, a group down in the center of town and everyone's going to, you know, be unmasked. And uh, I see David shaking his head up there. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, you know, take, take things back, you know, from them and they're trying to turn it into this us and them instead of the community good, which is very frustrating because it's like, Hey, you know, there's a lot of older retired people in this town. All it takes is, you know, someone bringing it home to someone else. There's a, there's a rehab nursing home. There's a retirement community here. So, um, you know, it's, that's kind of frustrating, you know, trying to get through yeah. the idea that this is for the community good. We're all on the same page. There's no us and them. There's just humans here. And, uh, so yeah, that's a long winded answer to your question. <laughs> oh, so, uh, what's a, what's a, what's a song to sing that kind of cuts through some of this? Oh, well, I decided to do a song that I wrote a few years ago because we had some really bad, bad flooding here about five years ago. It was catastrophic. We had, um, it just, was a strange combination of days of rain and then this sort of wall of water building up. And it was uh, what they call a river down here. I mean, I grew up in the Hudson River, so the Blanco River is like what we're used to is mostly as a stream, but it was raging. It was huge. And this tsunami of river water just came down and knocked out um, right down the road for me, a house with people in it, you know, 11 people died. Um, it was awful. And, uh, I had started writing this song a few years earlier than that when there was um, hurricanes and the Bastrop fires and started thinking about how the earth is changing. Um, so anyway, this is called End of Days. Um, hopefully we're not in the end of days right now. Hurricanes, wildfires, seems like we're is this the end of days? Feels like the end of days. Real floods, house is gone. Left in just to carry home. Is it the end of days? Feels like the end of days. Reach yourself. Oh. 
lost me and you where is love can you be through is this our Fabulous. I do love that song. Thank you. It needs uh, needs wide exposure right now. So uh, what do you have a website? that uh, I do. Um, it's easy. It's ClaudiaGibson.com is my That's website. Easy. It's easy. Yeah. And um, we're going to be I've been doing um, some online stuff, you know, online shows. My last show was for a friend who's a songwriter um, who's, of course, lost all her income. So um, right. um, we kind of did a, a little benefit for her to um, I'm fortunate I still have my day job as an educator that I'm getting paid for and I'm doing creating content electronic content for students online um, but you know it's it's really tough for all the musicians around Austin and you know everywhere everywhere who are just depending on touring and and uh, there's luckily in Austin um, because there's so many musicians there's a great organization called ham that uh, is for health insurance and mental health and all that. And there's, we have the central Texas food bank. So I've been doing stuff to help contribute to both um, and donating, you know, proceeds from stuff I get online to either other musicians or to those organizations. Cause also the big problem out here in Texas, we have a lot of undocumented folks and um, they can't go through, you know, the channels to get $1,200 or $2,400 for family. Um, and so they're running out of food. So places like the Central Texas Food Bank and other food banks, I'm sure out where you guys are, are super important. And, you know, we have lines out here for food banks. Um, so those are just, you know, and, and a lot of them, I've seen interviews online where they just say they're running out of, you know, they're running out of money, they're running out of supplies. And so that's a really important thing to support right now. I couldn't agree more. I'm gonna show people, this is a good time and I try to do this in every broadcast. Um, I try to remind people of the folks all around us, and it's um, not just in hospital emergency rooms or in testing centers. It's in supermarkets where shop restockers have died already. It's um, people who deliver stuff around the world, people mm -hmm. who fly stuff around the world who are not in jobs where they can stop, people who can't afford to stop because they're poor. As I said earlier, um, those in the slums in Bhopal and in Lusaka who have no access to food if they're told to shut down and, and lock up. So we're in a we're just in an amazing moment in human history, um, and it's good to pause and reflect on that. If you are among um, the fortunate, like we all are, to be able to sit and do work at home or connect um, indirectly, it's an amazing time, and we'll get through it though. Um, Irene O'Garden, who was a poet said something really powerful on here two weeks ago that I keep thinking about, which was, um, she says, people call it the great recession, the great depression. We haven't hit the, the, the great pause. Um, she calls it the, the, the great compassion. And, um, we can extend our passion and our compassion and impact online to any place on the planet. We can help foster better practices. We can help share, communicate, uh, and going forward in ways that are going to be valuable. And now I'm going to hold on here. I do see, Coming into our stream, I do see some sheep. Uh, our wonderful friend, Karen Brooks, oh, who yeah. is down, who is up in rural Massachusetts. She's from Beacon. She's a Beacon Beaconite at heart. She's part of the Trouble Sisters, our, uh, our um, wonderful musical compatriots to our Breakneck Ridge Review. And she's showing us the live scene there from her. I think there were 19 ewes, at least. I'm not sure if there's been any mortality. I mean, uh, uh, 19 moms, and I don't know how many little ones. But it's a wonderful thing to see, to see that nature uh, and human nature, you know, that interface between humans and animals done compassionately is a big part of the, the future going forward. Uh, people feeding us are lots of farmers. And one thing that Karen Brooks has said in rural Massachusetts, like rural areas around the country, uh, one of the things that's lacking is internet access. Kids can't go to school when they can't get online. And it's important to think about that too right now. And let's just listen for a second because this is pretty awesome. So here's a moment of silent reflection with 
Sheep. I think you have sound this time. Is that right? We do, Karen. Can you describe a little bit oh the situation? God. Then here's a here's this bottle baby who is just whining and thinks I'm his mom. Poor thing. Oh, so you have to listen to him and Bounder. Anyway, um, I still have three very overdue pregnant mothers. Everybody else is lambed. We've had last Sunday after I showed you, uh, I tried to be on, and then I had like major drama and had to call the vet. But oh, I'm looking forward to it being finished. <laughs> Wow. I'm looking forward to lambing being done and being able to put them out on pasture. Wow. And um, I have company at least, right? You I'm do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. These guys. Wow. I'm loving it. They're all like a few, they're a few weeks old now. So it's like they're big. They're big. You know, they're getting big. And it looks like there's a black sheep in the family. There's there's black ones and red ones and white ones and uh, <laughs> one mother has rejected her black baby but she'll nurse her white baby so I have to like force her. Here are these guys, two little red ones on their little mom. Uh, this is pretty awesome. Cute. Well, you have a pretty good pretty well, good that's connection. That's good. I'm I'm closer to the other to the Wi-Fi today, so. I sh I realize that's what I have to do, but in the barn there's no Wi-Fi at all. Wow! But um, later is something today you could there's sing? a Could you sing something a cappella for uh, us while here? we're touring? Um, let's see. Well, I could sing that little thing that I sang the very first show, which is uh, I wrote a long time ago. But it's a uh, reach for the stars and you'll never be sorry. Reach for the sun and you're never alone. Reach for the wind, it will tell you a story. Reach with your heart, it will lead you back home. And we can sing together. And we can sing as one of the dreams. For the sun. All right. And I think I'm going to sign off. It's raining, starting okay. to rain pretty hard. So thanks for having me on again. That I was just wonderful. We have to have a sheep break <laughs> every Happy every birthday, week. David. Right, thanks. We'll have a Talk sheep break every soon. week. Karen, that was wonderful. We love you. Thank you. So, See John, bye -bye. Bye. John uh, does another tune come to mind for you? You know what I was thinking of when I was watching that was that uh, the Beatles song with the dog barking. But <laughs> we don't have to sing it right now. Though. Uh, what was that one? I can't remember. Ho, ho. Da, da. Bill Dog, Bull Dog. Da, da, da. I didn't know that one. They have a couple dog songs. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, uh, well, before I play a, a song of mine, I, there's, well, this is kind of a song of mine. Uh, uh, our friend uh, Chip Martin in Nashville, who's been filling in for me when I can't be on the road with Orleans for various reasons, uh, either because I uh, have uh, writing and studio time scheduled. Uh, but uh, anyway, he's a fabulous guitar player and singer and songwriter. He did a, a wrote a version of uh, Dance With Me, a new version of Dance With Me, which I'll sing just one verse for you. Awesome. Uh, and then he he'll, he can do the rest for you. <laughs> right, we got one for sure. Distancing. It's time to practice social distancing until they find a way to beat Corona. I'll be alone. Distancing. Anyway, stay tuned for uh, uh, for Chip's version, which is uh, more than I can remember right at the moment, but. Uh, really good. And um, anybody who wants to find me uh, can find me at uh, johnhallmusic.com. Right. You can find Orleans at Orleans uh, Music. Uh, I'm sorry, orleansonline.com. And um, anyway, um, 
Hang on a second. Uh, that's okay. I'll show your website in the meantime. It's Chip calling, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's somebody knocking at the door with a package. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Okay, well, uh, you can pause for a second. I might, I, um, I'll, maybe I'll offer up a tune in the meantime. I haven't sure. sung on this program for the last three weeks, I think. So uh, let's see. Yes. I'm going to mute John. Let's go, Andy. Let's hear you. Yeah, I might do uh, just Happy a birthday, David, by the way. It's your birthday, totally. right? Yeah, it's David's birthday. Oh. Thanks, Claudia. Would love to know how you get such great tone on this system, by the way. Your husband must be a, a, an electronics genius. No, it's a Yeti blue mic, blue Yeti microphone, USB microphone. Uh huh. And that's all. Yep, because it has an interface built into it. So wow. it's a good one. Okay. Yeah. We might have to get one of those. Yeah. They're good. They've been sold out, but they're coming back. Yeah. Interesting. So, so I'm just going to briefly, oh, here, John's back, but I'll just briefly to do the first verse of a. Uh, of a song that's come to mind. Uh, well, fluke. Fluke, he doesn't even begin to describe the way life feels these days. Crisis a minute has become the norm. Worries just won't go away. Bills are piled high, windows are barred. Tread on my tires, worn thin. Got such an assortment of problems, I don't know where to begin. So I take my old dog for a seven mile walk, stare at the clouds in the sky, stand on a rock on the top of a hill, just simply wonder why. Why am I here? Where am I headed? Is there an end to these woes? Then the sun peeks out and a rainbow appears and my dog licks me on my nose. That's when I realize things ain't half as bad as they seem to be. I got two good legs, it's a beautiful day, and at least my dog loves me. I've decided to take it all a day at a time, made myself a little oh, oh. I'm gonna start each day with a prayer. And end each day with a toast. I'm gonna start each day with a prayer. And end each day with a toast. There you go. I've always love that song, Andy. It's great to hear it again. Yeah, I gotta sing that one more. I realize how appropriate it is right now. It's kind of like, oh. Because I know a lot of people. I, I, my son has learned how to mix martinis. <laughs> he's twenty-two. He's twenty-two. So That's good parenting, though. That's he, he doesn't like martinis, but he mixes me a martini every once in a while. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to bring back in. I think we've got everybody here. Uh, John, uh, if you <laughs> want to follow up with a tune, that would be wonderful. Um, uh, let's see. Are you? Uh, I'd love to. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just said with movers knocking on my door. Yeah. When we finish here, I'm going to be moving my studio electronics and everything in. Um, so, uh, but they're early. So, anyway, um, here's a song that um, is brand new tune. Actually, never been performed anywhere before. Uh, that my friend Tad Richards and I wrote. Uh, Tad's a wonderful lyricist from up in the, in the Woodstock, Saugerties, New York area. And um, anyway, so. I'm going to be reading from lyrics. Excuse me if I don't phrase everything correctly. That's okay. My friend, I see you've been wounded. came with pain a heartache included you asked for my advice now I will provide it don't you stay alone too long don't stay alone too long don't stay alone too long start to like it look at you 
yourself Another evening with Netflix Microwave dinner for one You start to expect it Too much left undone Too much guest neglected Don't you stay Starting to like it, my friend. You feel the touch of a warm hand, a voice from across the room saying, I understand. So I'm certain, don't you stay alone too long, stay alone too long, come stay alone too long, you might start to lie. That's really good. Yeah, it's it's, I've written about this. it's great to keep at it. No, uh, I'm to be close friend of mine. Uh, uh, how, 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 could you talk a little bit about collaborative, the co collaboration? You know, writing a song right. as a person, an individual. I've been, writing writing. Songs, I've been writing a lot of songs with John Paul Daniel, a friend of mine, wonderful singer, songwriter, musician, and artist, painter, uh, et cetera, in Nashville, who, um, Lost his wife recently, and uh, and he's going through, of course, the grieving process. Uh, but one of his friends told him, "Don't stay along too long; you might start to like it." And I thought that sounded like, um, like a song. And uh, and started started writing this tune, um, and then all of a sudden comes the coronavirus, and everybody's isolating, and and right. and a lot of people are alone. So it makes sense in that point of view, but it was really written about, you know, missing being with a uh, with a lover, a spouse, um, or wondering if it's time, you know, to to search for another. Anyway, the collaborative process it can start with the music. Uh, Dance with me started with my guitar part, and uh, Johanna said uh, from the kitchen in the other room, you know, sounds like dance with me and. I said, can we think of something a little more original than that? And and uh, it took a couple of months before we finished it. And obviously she was right that that was the lyric for that piece of music. Uh, still the one she wrote the entire lyric on back of an envelope and handed it to me and said, you think you could do anything with this? And I wrote the music in about 15 minutes. And and that became uh, the biggest Orleans hit. And, uh, and uh, but so I, sometimes I get songs like One Tribe, I think. Uh, there was an article, I believe it was in the New York Times, about um, about tribalism and about um, uh, tendency, which we see, unfortunately, too much of today, of yeah. wanting to have an enemy, wanting to be us and them, you know, wanting to have uh, the other to blame things on, and, yeah. uh, and or to distract attention from maybe what the real problem is. So I, I just saw Donna point to Rick when you said uh, to have someone else to blame things on. <laughs> Just, sorry, <laughs> I've done that, but um, but anyway, so the the process yeah. is really uh, in Nashville. There's a theory that I've spent a lot of time in Nashville um, writing with uh, with John Paul and with others down there, wonderful writers and friends. There's a 
approach down there, it's common, which is make an appointment to write. You know, 10 o'clock Monday morning, I'm going to be at your office and, or your house and we're going to sit down and, and write a song. I I came from a background of the more hippie-ish approach of, uh, you know, wait till a lightning to strike. And uh, at let's just jam, you know, and, and mm. we'll see. Maybe in the night I'll wake up with an idea. Uh, it turns out that if you practice your craft, the art shows up more often. And that's what I've learned is to uh, recently, relatively recently, is just have the guitar in my hands, have a pad and a pen or whatever your tools are to write and just get ideas down. And then it's more likely you'll come across something that's worth really finishing. Yeah, that, that that's a mix of discipline and creativity that I think people sometimes forget. I, I'm i really bad at that, which is why I haven't written a new song since in, in at least six years. <laughs> but uh, there was Jack Hardy, who was a legend in the city who I got to know. Uh, he, he was more, he was a great songwriter, but he was also like this Pied Piper for songwriting. And he had this weekly thing, the Fast Folk uh, Cafe, essentially at his apartment in the village. I wrote a story for the New York Times about it. And it was that, it gave it that urgency for all these folkies to know that once a week they would have to come there and not just have spaghetti and wine, but if they wanted to debut a song, uh, you know, they had to get, keep busy. So there's something about that for sure, that regularity. And I heard the Beatles, there was a really interesting interview with uh, Paul McCartney about the Beatles. And he said he and John had these sessions and they never came away from one without something. But it was like a rigor thing. You think of the Beatles, you don't think of that. But so that seems to be a, an important practice. I think it's more important than ever right now for people to feel, how do you dig in on something and make it a little bit better each week? Um, uh, Tia, I would, uh, actually Joseph was here again, but he's popped off. You can stay with us a little longer, Tia. Is there some reflection you want to provide about that same question? Yeah, There's actually, I do. And, and my, uh, uh, Tanya, mom's caregiver, just got here, and she can go check on mom, who's doing doing fine. But um, I, I I consider my I, I'm I'm not a good singer, and I'm a mediocre guitarist. But I I like to think of myself as a decent lyricist, and um, listening to John talk about how uh, the writing process um, and, you know, maybe, uh, next time I'll, I'll share it with you as a poem. I'm not, not prepared to sing it, uh, any of my songs to you, but I love writing and they come to me in different ways. Sometimes my favorite song just came to me with a, with a concept about, uh, rainy days of which we're having qu uh, quite the cool rainy day here in DC. And, uh, it was just a, a phrase, um, that I kept for a long, long time. And then, one day I sat down and, you know, completed the song in 20 minutes. And sometimes I think and work really hard at it. And other times I feel like I'm, you know, uh, channeling a, a, a voice from another place. And so for me, the process um, really varied. Um, and the only country song I ever wrote, you know, I was listening to, to the radio and listened to a good country song, <clears throat> which is not typically the way I write, meaning not a narrative arc with a beginning, a middle, middle and a end or a resolution. But I listened to it and I, and I was in quite the writing spree then. I pro was writing songs almost daily. It was a weird, rich moment of, of songwriting. Um, and I thought to myself, well, for God's sake, I can write a song like that. And I sat down and I wrote uh, half of a song called Country Boy that kind of reflects on my mother's Appalachia roots and the simplicity uh, um, and intellect of um, uh, that country smarts. And I got halfway through the song and I couldn't finish it because I didn't want it to finish as a, you know, with some cliche-ish uh, ending. And so I couldn't finish it. So I kept playing the first half of the song over and over again for people and then asking them to make recommendations to me on how it should be finished. And someone said, made a recommendation. And I said, no, 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 that he would never do that. And then I thought to myself, well, that's pretty funny. He, I mean, I made up this person. He can do whatever I want, <laughs> you know, whatever I tell him that's to. That's a funny, yeah. Uh, yeah, and eventually I yeah. finished the song, uh, you know. Yeah. I'll share it another time. Okay. Um, well, I'd love to hear another one from Rick and Donna, if you have something queued up. All your technology ready? Unmuting. <laughs> that that's time. the extent of the technology. I like that. There we go. This is a song that uh, 
Well, this is a song of affirmation from uh, Pete. Don't you know it's darkest before the dawn? This thought keeps me moving on. If we could hear these early warnings, the time is now. Quite early morning. If, if we, we could hear these early warnings, the time is now. Quite early morning. Some say humankind cannot endure. What makes them feel so doggone sure? I know that you who hear my singing can make those freedom bells go ringing. I know that you Make those freedom bells go ringing. Reminds me, of course, that um, next week on this very program, <laughs> we're doing a special um, 
three hour marathon session, if enough musicians show up, to uh, <laughs> honor Pete Seeger's legacy on his 101st, what would have been his 101st birthday. Virtually everyone on this call has had an intersection with Pete. Um, I cherish when we moved to the Hudson Valley, when I moved here in 1991, the first time I went to a Beacon Sloop Club meeting and uh, saw that monthly gathering talking about re restoring the river and having sharing food and song. And here was this guy who uh, had this power of the circle of song, whose most important contribution to music, along with his many songs, was this. And you know what I mean, Rick and Donna and David. It was his, he would, in between verses, he would say, okay, where are you guys? The circle of song includes you, the audience. So it was, it was a two-way street. Like all the most important use of the internet is uh, bi-directional, not just putting out a tweet saying how great something is, but making sure it's a conversation. And Pete was all about that. And it was a magical thing. So folks, just uh, Google for Revkin and sustain what, or Google, you know, uh, you can all the ways you're looking at this thing right now you can find portals to get this to where we will be next week and um it's just been great this has been another great morning um david uh, do you have another song you wanted to share from, from yeah I, wanted, I didn't want to leave with a total downer song and this is my birthday and I, I had to the great pleasure of being able to make blueberry pancakes to my granddaughter this morning it doesn't get much better than that no uh, and my wife even ate one which is a rarity so uh, but so i wanted to sing a again a john prine song uh thinking still a lot about him and this yeah. is a, a, a classic john prine song for uh <clears throat> for a uh, for a day like today people who are sad sometimes they wear a frown and people who are kings well sometimes they wear a crown but all the people who don't fit Get the only fun they get from people putting people down. People putting people down. Yeah, and people without love sometimes build a fence around the garden up above that makes the whole world go round. But all the people who don't fit get the only fun they get oh, from people putting people down. People putting people down. <laughs> so cold. Sometimes it gets so cold. Love your wife, you may lose your family. Well, you may lose your mind just to keep your sanity. But all the people who don't fit get the only fun they get from people putting people down. People putting people down. And people who are glad, well, sometimes they will smile. People who are sad, they don't want that extra mile. But all the people who don't fit get the only fun they get. People put people down. People put people down. So cool. Sometimes it gets so cool.
Yeah. Very nice. Well, there you have it. I'm off to uh, spend the rest of my birthday figuring out what else I can do for my granddaughter. So I can't imagine a better way to play it to to play the day. David, (laughs) it's wonderful to have you here always. And I miss having being in the same room with you. Yeah, well, soon enough. Soon enough. We'll get there. And it's great that you have I think your 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 grandkids are across the street. And yeah, my daughter and her husband and my granddaughter uh, kind of a bailed from Brooklyn about a month ago now and have been up here across the street from us. So that's been nice having, having them around. Yep. There's some other members of our musical community who are scattered far and wide. I think Jeremy Schoenfeld is down in New Zealand where he got trapped. Yeah. Unless, unless he came back. I think no, he's, 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 there. He's, we, we could call it stuck in New Zealand, but he's in a house on the beach somewhere. Right. Not uh, so terrible. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I've seen some pictures of where he is. So. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, David. Happy birthday. Um, go enjoy it with the next generation. And, See you at Cedar uh, Fest next week. Much love. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Care, so, uh, Donna, Claudia, John, great to see y'all. So we're getting down toward the end here. Um, John and Cla- well, Claudia, I think we're, if I'm doing this in a circular way, maybe it's time for Claudia to weigh in again with a tune. If you have something that comes to mind. John say he had to go because I'd love oh, to oh. play again. You had moving. Yeah, you're moving and stuff, right? John, why don't you Thanks close for- out your close out your visit? It's one, been wonderful to see you again. It's been a long time since I've seen you in person, uh, and it's wonderful. You're just a few miles away, really, and thank you for sharing your uh, your time with us and this audience. Yeah, it's amazing, uh, and thank you all for your music, and thank you, Andy, for putting this all together. And um, uh, so. It, the latest project I just wanted to mention that I'm doing or have done, actually, it's out there um, now, is this uh, record called uh, Little Black Dress that's uh, Jonelle Mosser uh, and me, uh, live recorded live at the uh, Bearsville Theater in Woodstock, New York. Um, back in the 90s, it's, a, it's an old, it was a cassette, actually, that Johanna found in the bottom of a drawer and had digitized and edited and mastered. And now it's this uh, it's this record you can find on all the online platforms. Uh, and uh, there's actually a Little Black Dress Facebook page if anybody's interested. It's a wonderful, mm-hmm. she's a fabulous singer and co-writer. Um, this is a tune, uh, I was gonna do this one last tune that's, uh, I'll do the short version of it. Uh, it goes on, but, but anyway, uh, it's called World on Fire. And we wrote this, uh, my friend John Paul, Daniel in Tennessee and Tad Richards up here in Saugerties, uh, New York, wrote this song together um, starting in January when the headlines were about the wildfires in Australia, among other places. And um, so, but it's, it talks about everything from interpersonal stuff to global and uh, especially about communication. So anyway, I shouldn't have to explain it, should I? I'm putting. I just put it. I just put the uh, website on the uh, banner there. Oh, great! Thank you. Great. for one another. 
Talk about a thousand million creatures' lives destroyed. Talk about the air too thick with smoke and ash to breathe. Talk about destruction. Too much to grieve. World on fire. Sister and brother, love for one another. I've never performed that uh, in public before. So, uh, but anyway, you'll hear it eventually. This is going to be a new John Hall record coming down the pike soon that I think that's going to be on. So, uh, meanwhile, it's been great. You have to unmute yourself, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Andy's uh, muted. Yeah. Sorry. Um, that was, it's been wonderful to have you here and uh, to debut a couple of these tunes. And again, to, we'll see you down the line uh, when the distancing eases. Um, it's important for folks to really sustain this ability to connect from a distance. So in the meantime, one of the best tunes that's been sung on here was Karen Brooks, the sheep farmer, who sang Julie Gold's From a Distance uh, twice now on the show. And, and it has all this new resonance now uh, because that's what we're trying to do is connect from a distance. Um, so, Claudia, and thank you, John, again. If you have to leave, uh, it's been wonderful thank to have you, you here. Yeah, I'm going to um, I'm gonna do a song that isn't mine, but I've been playing a lot lately because I feel like it's resonant with what's going on um, today. Um, it's a Niccolo tune. I walk out 
Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Nick Lowe. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Andy. It's it's amazing how songs that sit there for so long can resonate in these different contexts, and that one surely does. So, Rick and Donna, you've closed out a couple of these programs with uh, numbers uh, that range from "This Land Is Your Land" to uh, "Well, I, Owls at the Owls Lullaby." Didn't close out a session, but it was one of my favorites. So, uh, do you have one more song in you for us, for the audience? Be and then before we re-meet on uh, Seeger Day, a week from now? Yeah, we do. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do a Bill Stain song. My favorite river song. Not oh. one that I wrote, so. And he's one of my favorite musicians, not just because he plays guitar the way I do, upside down. <laughs> he's a nice guy. He's a nice yeah. guy, too. I was born in the path of the winter wind. Raised where the mountains are old, their springtime waters came dancing down. I remember the tales they told, the whistling ways of my younger days, too quickly have faded on by. But all of my memories linger like the light in the fading sky. River, take me along in your sunshine. Sing me your song, never moving and winding and free. You roll, old river. You change, old river. Let's you and me, river, run down to the sea. I've been to the city and back again Been moved by some things that I've learned Met a lot of good people and I call them friends Felt the change when the seasons turn I've heard all the songs that the children sing And listened to love's melody And felt my own music within me rise River, take me along in your sunshine. Sing me your song, ever moving and winding and free. You roll an old river, you change an old river. Let's you and me, river, run down to the sea. Someday 
when the flowers are blooming still, someday when the grass is still green, my rolling waters will round the bend and flow into the open sea. So here's to the rainbow that's followed me here, and here's to the friends that I know. And here's to the song that's within me now. I will sing it where'er I go. River, take me along in your sunshine. Sing me your song, river moving and winding and free. You roll it, old river. You change, old river. Let's you and me river. The sea. Thank you. Andy, that's you're muted. Yeah, yeah, I'm unmuted. That was wonderful. And that's a great way to uh, end this week's um, edition of Sustain What, the Sunday song sessions I call Unbroken Circles for obvious reasons. And let's keep the circle unbroken and meet, re meet here again. Claudia, do you have any other sessions today that you want to point people to? Um, not today. I'm going to mm -hmm. have one next Sunday later in the afternoon with a couple of really wonderful songwriters from Houston, uh, Matt Harlan and Alex Koba. And uh, they're both um, full-time songwriters who are kind of, you know, um, stuck right now in Houston. But they're, they're really yeah. wonderful talents, so I would encourage you to check them out. And Matt Harlan has an album you should really – take a listen to Andy. He's, he's an amazing songwriter. And um, oh. yeah. And, it, and just like last word, what you said, it's so important. Um, I met you through a songwriting group, but, um, but yeah, for songwriters, like getting together now is hard. So uh, yeah. I'm in an online group. We have to produce something every week and, and oh, that's we, good. Well, you think you have all this free time now, and but I find like it's, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, I feel like it's all too overwhelming to process yet to write about. So yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, thanks again to all to you all. Thanks again to John Hall, thanks. Joseph Pupe in Zambia, Zambia, David Ross on his seventy first seventy first birthday, uh, hey. and uh, Tony Furtado out in Portland, Oregon, for joining us today on our Sustain What session. Be back next week, ten thirty to well, actually to one thirty. I think if we do it for the Seeger sessions, and yep. um, be safe. Connect at a distance until we can connect again in person. Thanks. And thank you, Andy, for all you do. Thanks, Thanks to the Earth Institute of Columbia University for making this possible. So if I didn't have a job right now, I'd, I'd probably be trying to do this in some way or other, but it's good to have support of an organization. This is all about communication and sustainability and uh, music and the arts definitely play a big part in that. So good day to you all. Stay safe and uh, sustain what? Sustain this. I did Thank Lisa. You.